Hello, my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, join me once again as we continually put together more decks for our Basically series. If you haven't seen this series before, this is the series where we put together ultra budget decks. How budget are we talking, however? How about, again, a deck that doesn't require a single rare or mythic to put together? Yeah. Keep talking. That's right. So without further ado, let's show off today's deck in our series, a deck that I'm calling Basically Warriors. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Long time viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right in. So our Warriors deck today is using Mardu colors. That means it's going to be white, black, and red. You're looking at an average mana curve about 2.0. You're looking at 26 creatures, 4 instants, 4 sorceries, 6 enchantments, and only 20 lands. The gist of Warriors is basically, it is a no-nonsense creature deck that focuses on course just trying to build up as many creatures as possible. We start pumping them up with our creature anthem effects, and of course we support them with a little bit of removal and some light disruption to ensure that we can just overwhelm our opponent, get in all of our damage ASAP to smash our way to victory. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and let's talk about the creatures in our deck. Starting in the one drops, I have Mardu Hateblade here. This again will gain Death Touch if you do pay the black mana for it, which is a great way to kind of fake out your opponent as you're trying to do combat damage. The other one drops you'll have is going to be Usher of the Fallen. This is going to be one of your key cards here. With the boast ability, as long as you activate that as you're attacking, you'll be able to create a 1-1 Human Warrior creature token, allowing our deck and attack plan to go wide. Your only other one drop is going to be Cacophony Scam. This one's a little bit more unique, so let's talk about it for just a moment. So Cacophony Scam here is a red Phyrexian Goblin Warrior that's a 1-1. When it deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice it, and if you do, you proliferate. When Cacophony Scam dies, it'll deal damage equal to its power to any target. Now, granted, only one point of damage doesn't really do much, but you'll see in just a moment we have many ways of pumping our warriors up to give them extra damage, and this can be a great way to kind of force your opponent's hand to then just finish them off. In the two drop slot, you'll now have Shrouded Shepherd, which is a really awesome card for us because it's a pseudo wrath on the adventure side, and also when it enters the battlefield, you'll be able to give one of your creatures plus two plus two until end of turn. Your other cards are going to be Chief of the Scale here. This will only buff your warrior's defense. However, if we need to buff attack, we have Chief of the Edge. So just to give it a fair ratio, four on the edge and then two on the scale. The other buffs we'll have is going to be in the three drop slot. Kagarin War Leader here. So this is a three mana 3-3 three, three that gives all of our warriors plus one plus one. Great again to pump up the entire team to just start overwhelming our opponents. Now, circling back again to the support pieces in the one drop slot, you'll have Duress. This game plan, of course, will require us to again just make sure that our warriors get protected. So this is why, for once, we're actually going to main deck this. This will allow us just to get rid of a non-creature, non-land card from our opponent's hand and discard it to the graveyard. In the two drop slot, you'll have Case of the Gateway Express as additional removal for the deck. This is actually going to be also great for us because this can also pump up if we can get three creatures to attack to give all of our creatures plus one, plus zero. Also, going into the 3-drop slot, you'll also have another support piece, which is Mardu Charm. This one actually does quite a bit, but we do need to make sure we have the correct mana for it. And if you do, this is basically going to be, as it says, an instant that says we can choose either to deal 4 damage to target creature, we can create 2 1-1 one, one white warrior creature tokens, and they will gain first strike until end of turn, or target opponent can reveal their hand, and then we can choose a non-creature, non-land card, and discard that. So, to put it another way, it's either a really expensive duress, you can also use it as a combat trick to, to kind of block your opponent its attack or just again remove something out of the way so that way all of our warriors can start doing some more damage. And then finally, in the 4-drop slot here, in our pseudo kind of finisher, but also help us just keep churning through our deck, we have Raider's Spoils. So this is a 4-mana enchantment that simply reads, Creatures you control get plus 1 plus 0. Whenever a warrior you control deals combat damage to a player, you may pay 1 life. If you do, draw a card. As long as we can keep doing damage with our warriors, we can keep filling our hand up with stuff. Yes, we will have to pay 1 life to do so, but that's a small price to pay to ensure we still have enough action to help defeat our opponents. As far as the mana base is concerned, it's going to be as simple as can be, just like many of our other ultra budget decks. So of course, we're going to be rocking some planes. We're going to do some swamps and some mountains. We will be able to then utilize Nomad Outpost. This will basically be our budget triome, if you will. But again, it just works perfectly well for our deck to fix what we need. And then finally, four copies of Secluded Courtyard. This will kind of help us just make sure we can round out our warriors and ensure that we can cast them on time when we need to. Granted, however, this does mean that you might have some moments where it might be a little clunky with the mana, but that's a small price to pay to ensure we can fix what we need when we need it. And as always, 
always, if you are interested in playing this in best of three, these are going to be your best options for you. So you'll have Deafening Silence here. Again, as always, this is your great option to stop combo decks and control decks out there. For Graveyard Hit, you'll use Soul Guide Lantern here, which will help again exile some stuff, and you can also sacrifice it to draw a card in a pinch. Impact Tremors here, and I'm also going to add this along with Bastion of Remembrance, depending on, again, how your opponent is, if they are very removal heavy. Impact Tremors can at least allow us to help kind of close the gap to do a little extra damage by either using Impact Tremors to ping our opponent whenever a creature enters the battlefield, but if they are removal heavy, instead bring in Bastion of Remembrance here so you can also drain them when we lose a creature and we will help gain one life to help stabilize us. You also have for your artifact and enchantment hate rip apart and also it can be utilized to do some light creature removal in the early game and then if you do end up going wide maybe your opponent is very wrath heavy we can also bring in make a stand here which gives all of our creatures a plus one plus one zero pump and then gain indestructible which is also a great way to finish off your opponent if you actually want to use it aggressively or defensively. Now as far as strategy is concerned and how you can win with your warriors it's mostly going to come down to playing basically fair magic if you will. That may sound a little boring but that literally is how this deck works. You want to just play everything on curve and just eventually build up your army pump up your creatures to eventually overwhelm your opponent before they can react to you but if you already know that there's going to be something coming down the pipeline to destroy you this is exactly why you have cards like duress and mardu charm to hopefully again disrupt your opponent's game plan although duress is great in the early game it may not be ideal to the mid or late game unless if you know for sure your opponent is holding on to that key counter spell or wrath Keep in mind also that one of the biggest advantages of Mardu Charm is you can then adjust it as you need to. You can either damage something out of the way to clear the path to make sure you can get your victory in. You can also make an extra couple of warrior tokens to help chump block. Or if you need to, you can even instant speed basically an expensive duress just to make sure that they can't sneak attack you with anything they may have in their hand. One of the other biggest advantages that this deck has is, since you have quite a few cards that will just pump up your whole team, as long as your opponent doesn't have anything to take out those key lords, you can definitely overwhelm your opponent very quickly if they don't have an answer. However, the biggest downside to this deck is, as you've just seen right now, not only are we again susceptible to wraths and spot removal, you'll notice this is also one of the few decks we have where we don't have a way to ramp our game plan out. So you literally will have to play as fair as possible of just going on curve. Some of you may not be fond of that, but this is literally how this deck is going to work. So you really have to play a little bit more methodical with this, even though you do have a lot of aggressive creatures. If you know the coast is clear, by all means, go all out. If you know your opponent is going to start disrupting things, then you're going to have to just adjust your game plan carefully. But you do have a lot of combat tricks, such as your case of the Gateway Express, such as Shrouded Shepherd, your Mardu Hate Blade. These can all be key things that can help you just push things around and just get around your opponent's game plan. Finally, don't underestimate some of your weaker cards like Cacophony Scamp or even Usher of the Fallen. Usher of the Fallen on its own is literally an army in the can. If your opponent doesn't have a way of getting rid of it, you can then get a couple of extra tokens out, which will put a lot more pressure on your opponent than they may realize. Also, with Cacophony Scamp, if you can get at least a little extra pump out of it, even if it does die, you will be able to do a little bit of extra damage to hopefully close out the game against your opponent. And then finally, if you can manage to get down the Raider Spoil, hopefully with that you can be super aggressive to hopefully just refuel your hand with a couple extra cards that can hopefully get you your win. And if you are a fan of this style of gameplay, just like my other decks that I have out there, I'll show you on screen right now above a couple of samples of previous deck decks that we have done that are very similar to this style of gameplay, which is either creature heavy or similar to the style of hyper aggro just to get your wins in. But even something as simple as upgrading the mana base just on its own will go leagues ahead to give you the upgrades you could need to make this deck a lot more consistent with its game plan. And with that all out of the way, here are my final thoughts that I want to give on the deck. Overall, when it comes to creature types, yes, I know, Warriors is not exactly the premier deck type that you want to think of when it comes to putting together creatures, because obviously people would rather do, I don't know, wizards or goblins or elves. But don't let that deter you from what Warriors can do here. As you saw today, the one of the biggest advantages we have as a Warrior deck is we are very much very combatant, and because of that, we have a lot of combat tricks that can sometimes throw our opponent's game plan off. And that's honestly, I think, the the best way to take advantage of warriors. To put it another way, if you are a fan of creature decks, if you're a fan of combat tricks, and if you're a fan of putting together a deck that'll just have every card build upon each other to make your creatures bigger and stronger and overwhelm your opponent, then I would definitely say, give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to put together an army of warriors to overwhelm your opponent and smash your way through victory, you'll be also very surprised at what it can pull off in the combat phase. And I assure you, you'll not only have a lot of fun, but you'll definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching, everyone. And just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright.
Later.